Hello, Dread Mechanic here, and today I would like to show you how to build an automated farming robot to assist you with managing your new farm. The new Apex Survival update has added a whole bunch of new features, including the production and collection of food items. And we can automate a lot of this process using some very simple techniques to help make our lives a little bit easier. This robot is designed to operate in a one block wide aisle with a farm plot on either side of it. It will dock up to the farm using a connector on its underside, so you will need to place a small inset connector in the floor. And it will also use a beacon as a reference point for your AI blocks, so you will need to build one somewhere on your farm. This farm design can easily be scaled up to be as long or as short as you need for your particular purposes, so in this tutorial I have built a 9 block long row of farm plots. To start with, we are going to need quite a few blocks for our farming robot, including some conveyors, suspensions, thrusters, event controllers, batteries, AI blocks, a sorter, a timer, a gyro, a sensor, a button, a remote control, a connector, an antenna, and most importantly, some collectors. So in order to build our robot, the first thing we will do is place a landing gear and an armor block. Then we will place our AI recorder block, our connector block, and our AI flight block, making sure that the AI blocks are all facing in the same orientation. And we will also place a sensor facing forward on the front of the AI block. Next we will place our timer and an event controller on either side of the connector. And we will name them Launch Timer and Docking Connect. Then we will place our suspension blocks facing out with the steering angles set to their maximum settings to create a bit of floor clearance for our robot. We will also set the friction to 0%, we will set the strength to 50%, and we will set the power to 0%. Then we will place our sorter facing down towards the connector so that it pulls all of our food out of the robot. Next we will place an event controller on either side of the sorter. And we will name one of them Harvest and we will name the other one Docking Detect. Then we will place our forward and reverse thrusters on the sides of the event controllers. After that we can place a straight conveyor on the top of the sorter. Then we can place a remote control and a gyroscope on either side of the conveyor. Next we can place a battery behind the conveyor and then we can place a button on the back of the battery and then we can place a conveyor T-section in the middle with another three straight sections on either side and then on the end of each conveyor line we can place a collector facing downwards towards the farm plots. Next we can place one more battery at the back of the robot on top of the other one. And then finally we can place an antenna block on the back of the robot so we can connect up to it and set up its AI programming. So that is all the basic blocks that we need to build in order to make this robot work correctly. But I have also added a bunch of extra blocks to act as visual and audible indicators to alert me when the robot is active. So we can also add a light to let us know what state the robot is in. We can also add a pair of sound blocks to let us know when it has launched and when it has docked. And we can also add a broadcast controller to send us messages on its current state if we are not in visual or audible range. 
and we can even add a custom turret controller so we can build our robot ahead just for fun. And now that we have all of those extra parts in place, we can move on to programming everything. So if we head into the control panel, we can start setting things up. First of all, we're going to need to make a few groups to help condense our programming a little bit. So we'll make a group for our AI blocks, and a group for our batteries, a group for our head rotor and hinge, and lastly, we need to make a group for all of the blocks that we want to turn on and off when the robot docks with the farm. This group will include the AI blocks, the custom turret controller, the gyroscope, the head camera, the light, the sensor, and the thrusters. And while we are in the control panel, we will also select all of our suspension blocks and turn them off to conserve power. So next we can start setting up our timer and event controllers. So if we go to our launch timer and click on the setup actions button. And the first thing we will do is set our AI flight block to turn on and activate the block's AI. We will then turn on our AI recorder block and select the play on action. After that we will turn off the docking detect event controller. Then we will unlock the docking connector, and we will also switch it off. This will prevent an infinite docking loop between the event controller and the connector when we try to disconnect the robot from the farm. And now we can start setting up our event controllers. So if we go to our docking connect controller, we can set the event to connector lock and unlock, and we can select our docking connector as the trigger. Then we can click on the Select Actions button and set up the docking controls. On the first page, we will turn off the control system group in the first slot and turn it on again in the second slot. On the second page, we will set the Grid AI to turn off in the first slot and turn on again in the second slot. On the third page, we will set our batteries to recharge in slot 1 and enable Auto in slot 2. Then we can set up all of our indicators and extra controls. So on page 4, we will set our docking sound block to play in slot 1, and our docking launch sound block to play in slot 2. And then on page 5, we can set our broadcast controller to transmit message 1 in slot 1, and transmit message 2 in slot 2. On page 6, we can set our lights to change colours to indicate different states. So here I've set the light to change to orange when it is docked, and I've set it to change to green when it launches. And then finally, we can set up some of the reset controls for our head. So on page 7, we will select our head group, and choose the rotate to angle action. We will set it to 0 degrees, at 5 RPM. Then in page 7, slot 2, we will set the lower limit to minus 30 degrees. And on page 8, slot 2, we will set the upper limit to 30 degrees. Now we can set up our docking detect controller, so we will set the event to connector ready idle. And we will set our docking connector as the trigger. And now we can once again click on select actions. And on page 1, slot 1, we will set the docking connector to lock. And on page 2, slot 1, we will set the docking detect controller to turn itself off. Then we can set up our harvest event controller, which we will leave on the cargo filled event. We will also leave it on the equal to or greater than condition. And we will set it to 0.0001%. And select our collectors as the trigger. This will cause the event controller to trigger as soon as anything appears in the collectors. And then we can once again go back to the select actions menu. And on 
page one, slot one, we will set the docking connector to unlock. On page two, slot one, we will set the docking connector to turn itself off. And then on page three, we will once again set the docking detect controller to turn itself off as an extra failsafe. And then finally on page four, slot one, we will trigger our launch timer. Now we can move on to some of the other systems in our farming robot. So next we can select our docking sorter and set it to whitelist. We can turn drain all on, and then we can select our desired crop from the filter list. Then we can set up our docking sensor, which we are going to use to turn the robot docking controls back on for its return journey. Normally, I would use the AI waypoint to trigger these actions, but AI blocks can have a few issues meeting their exact target when you use them on the ground in this fashion. So instead, we will use a sensor to detect the wall at the end of the aisle. So for this sensor's range, we want to set everything to its minimum settings except for left and right extent, which will both be set to 0.5 meters, and the forward extent, which will be set to 5 meters, or whatever distance you may require in your case. And then we can set it to only detect stations, so nothing else will interfere with its harvesting cycle. And then we can click on the Select Actions button. And on page 1, slot 1, we will set the docking detect controller to turn on. And on page 2, slot 1, we will set the docking connector to turn back on as well. Next, we can set our sound blocks to whatever sounds we want to use. In this example, I have used some of the alarm sounds to indicate docking and launching. Then we can set up our custom turret controller for the head. So we will set the rotor for the azimuth, we will set the hinge for the elevation, we will set the camera up, and we will set the velocities to something a little bit more reasonable. Then we can turn on the turret AI, and we can set it to only target characters. And then we can set up our broadcast controller. So we can set a custom name for it. And in the message 1 box we can type in docked. And in the message 2 box we can type harvesting mushrooms. And now the only thing left to do should be to set up the grid AI so we can automate our new farming robot. So if we go to our AI flight block, first thing we need to do is make sure that precision mode is turned on. Then we can set the speed limit to 0.5 meters per second. And we can set the minimum altitude to 0 meters. We will make sure that the Align to Planetary Gravity box is checked. And we will set the max pitch and max roll angles to 1 degree so that the AI has a little bit of wiggle room. And now we can cut the robot down and set up his AI waypoints. And if we access him via the remote control and head into his control panel, first we can deactivate our docking detect controller, our docking connector, and our docking sensor so they don't interfere with the next few steps. Then we can go to our AI recorder block and make sure that the repeat box is checked. Then we can go to our reference beacon menu and select our farm beacon as the reference point. Now the waypoints we record will be relative to this beacon, making it easier to relocate our farm robots or when building duplicates from a blueprint. We will then drive down to the end of the aisle until our robot is about halfway past the final farm plot. Again, this is because AI blocks can struggle to reach their targets when used in this way and usually stop just short of the waypoint. So we will record the waypoint slightly further than we normally would to account for this. So we can go back into the control panel, and go back to our AI recorder block, and then we can click on the add waypoint button. Now we can drive back down the aisle and again stop just past the last farm plot so our robot actually travels over the docking connector in the floor. Then we can once again go back into our control panel and back to our AI recorder block, and we can again press the add waypoint button. And now we should have set up everything we need for this robot to operate automatically. So to test him out and create a trigger to activate him manually, we can select the button on the back of him that we built earlier. 
and then we can set that button to trigger our launch timer. Now we can press the button and watch as our robot runs through its harvesting cycle automatically. If for some reason he should miss the docking connector on his return journey, he will cycle through the routine and make another attempt on the way back. And now if we plant some crops in the farm plot, he will automatically activate when those crops reach full maturity. And now that we know that our manual controls and our automation controls all work correctly, last thing we can do is give this guy a paint job and a little bit of greebling, and that'll be our farm bot pretty much finished. And that has been my tutorial on how to build an automated farming robot, so thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.